Good morning, church, and thank you so much for tuning in to our Sunday morning service for Sunday, March the 29th, 2020. So glad to have you join us today as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I want to say thank you also for uh, tuning in to our services last week and uh, appreciate so very much all of the calls and texts uh, that we had from you all this week. It was good to talk with you, text with you, and let's do endeavor to try to stay in touch with one another and uh, check on one another during this time that we're not able to be together. This morning, I want you to take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter number 51. Psalms chapter number 51. And I really want to just focus on one word in one verse today. It's in verse number 10. Psalms 51 and verse number 10. The Bible says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Let's pray together, may we? Our Father, in Jesus' name, we count it such an honor and privilege to be able to open your precious word and to preach from it. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that during this time of crisis, uh, this time that we're not able to gather together in person, Lord, that you have provided us with technology that we can still preach the Word of God to the church. The church can hear and receive the Word of God. And Lord, in this odd way for right now, we are joined together as one heart, one group of believing people gathered around your word to worship you today. You're so good to us and so merciful and so kind, and we thank you. And Lord, thank you for all that you've done and what you are doing. And we ask your blessing upon this message today. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen and amen. The one word that I want to focus on this morning from Psalms 51.10 is the word renew. Uh, David as he's writing this psalm under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, desires of the Lord that the Lord would not only create in him a clean heart, but would renew in him a right spirit. Let me say by way of introduction that Psalms 51, of course written by David under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was written as a result of the visit he received from the prophet Nathan as recorded in 2 Samuel chapter number 12. In that passage of scripture, Nathan was sent by the Lord and uh, with a message for King David. And he revealed to King David through a story, uh, a story of a rich man, a story of a poor man, the story of one little ewe lamb and the story of a traveler. Now, he equated these four characters in this story that he was giving to King David. And uh, he told the king that there was a problem in the kingdom. And here was the problem. He said there was a rich man in the kingdom who had all kinds of livestock and and uh, possessions, and uh, there was a poor man in the kingdom, and all he had was one little ewe lamb. That's all he had. And the day came when a traveler came through the kingdom and stopped in at the king's palace. And the king made the decision to entertain that traveler. And so rather than taking from his own stock to satisfy the need of the traveler, he went to this one poor man and took his one and only ewe lamb and served it up to the traveler. Nathan said, now, your highness, your majesty, what shall be done to this rich man? And King David became livid. He became extremely upset and angered at the actions of this man. 
And he said, well, I'll tell you this much, this man's going to die. But before he dies, he's going to restore fourfold to this poor man what he took from him. David, not realizing in the words of his own mouth, was rendering his own judgment. At that moment, Nathan looks at the king and said, Thou art the man. You see, the message from God through Nathan to King David was this. You may be the king. And you may be smart and you may be slick. But your sin is not hidden from God. God knows all about it. And He says your sin is no longer going to be hidden. And so in that text of Scripture, Nathan, through the Lord, revealed to David what his punishments would be for the acts of sin that David committed in his adulterous affair with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, and then his uh, other sin of conspiring and ordering the death of one of his most faithful soldiers, Uriah. We know that the Bible tells us that David was told that the sword would never leave his house. Other things would take place. And David did restore fourfold to Uriah what he took when he took away Uriah's wife and had the affair with her and caused her to be with child. If you read your Bible, you'll find that David lost four sons. As a result of this sin, he paid fourfold what he took including the child that was a result of the adulterous affair between him and Bathsheba. In this 51st Psalm, verse number 10 captures the heart of David. In verse number 10, it serves as the catalyst that drives the heart of David in writing this psalm. We can hear his grief. We can hear his conviction. We can hear the repentance in his voice after being found out. He says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So as I said a moment ago, I want to focus our attention in in the message this morning To that word, renew. David desires for the Lord to renew a right spirit within him. The word renew is an interesting word. It really has three meanings. It's a very broad uh, in its uh, definition. But as I studied on this word renew, I found that it covers three areas of a person's life. First of all, uh, it deals with our damnation as sinners before God. As sinners before God, we are guilty. We are on our way to hell because of our sinful nature. It's what we inherited from our Father And all the way back through the line, down through the centuries from our father Adam. And we find that it deals with the damnation of of us as sinners in its first definition. To renew means to produce something new. You see, in order to be forgiven of sin, to become a child of God no longer be the enemy of God, we cannot reform, we cannot do better because we have a a tainted, we have a sinful nature that must be dealt with. That's why we have to be born again. 
We have to be born the second time, born from above. And the Bible tells us over in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Not only does the word renew mean to produce something new and deals with our damnation as sinners, but it also deals with our damage as Christians. Our damage as Christians. Not the damage that we may inflict so much as the damage that we may receive as a Christian. The second definition of the word renew means to repair or to restore. And then the third definition of the word renew deals with our dullness as soldiers because the word renew means to polish a sword. Now that doesn't mean to rub with a cloth and make it shiny, but rather To polish a sword means to resharpen it, and it's dull. Many times uh, uh, a blade, whether it be a a knife blade or a a chainsaw blade or whatever kind of blade, it, it can become dull simply by use. Not using it wrong, but using it for what it was intended for, it can become dull. And you and I, by virtue of having a sin nature, though we're forgiven, though we're made new by the blood of Christ, uh, our life, our spiritual life can become dull by the very fact that we are serving faithfully the Lord. Because you see, we're in a battle. We're in a battle not with mankind, not with flesh and blood, but we're in a spiritual battle with the devil, and we can become dulled in that fight. And so, of those three definitions, those of you that are watching this webcast and are listening to my voice, you consider your own situation. You consider which one of these definitions applies to you. Do you need to be made new in Christ Jesus? Have you never been saved? Have you never trusted Christ by faith? Then you don't need a dose of do better or reformation or religion. You need redemption. You need to come to Christ and be saved. How do I do that, preacher? You simply come to realize that you are a sinner. Admit to God what you are. And then ask the Lord to have mercy upon you and to forgive you of those sins. And you repent of them. You turn away from that sinful life. You turn away from the sins of that life. And you turn to God. And you put your faith and trust in His finished work upon the cross of Calvary in order for you to be forgiven of your sins and placed into the family of God. Or perhaps you have been damaged. Perhaps you have been injured as a child of God. And you're not as faithful as you once were. You're not as active as you once were. Because you're dealing with these feelings of bitterness or hurt. And you're having a hard time dealing with that. And it's hard to serve God when you have those feelings. You see, if you're lost, you need renewal in that you need to be made new. If you've been hurt and injured as a child of God, you need renewal. In other words, you need to be repaired and restored. And then, child of God, there may be uh, many of you listening this morning that you may be in the third category of renewal, and that is you just need to be polished. You just need to be resharpened. Now, I don't know which situation is yours, but I do know this much, that all of us are in one of those three categories. 
Let me speak three things about renewal this morning in the message. Number one, I want to speak for just a moment about personal renewal. Personal renewal. It begins with salvation. <coughs> Pardon me. And that creates the relationship that we spoke about with the Lord Jesus Christ. But personal renewal doesn't just stop there. Personal renewal also continues with sanctification. Sanctification means to be set apart for a special purpose. And so as our salvation creates the relationship, our sanctification leads or carries on our fellowship. If you would, with your Bible open, turn with me to the book of Ephesians and chapter number 4 for just a moment. And I want to show you a series of verses in this great epistle of the Apostle Paul. Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number 4. When you find your place in this chapter, turn with me and look at verse number 22, beginning at verse number 22. What we have listed here for us in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 22 and going through the remainder of the chapter in verse 32, we have for us a list of actions that will guarantee our sanctification if we'll follow the Word of God. I want you to notice, first of all, in verses 22, 23, and 24, the Bible says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, now in those three verses that I just read to you, we find that the first step in maintaining our sanctification and our fellowship with God is a purposeful and daily activity of replacing old habits with new holiness. Replacing old habits with new holiness. Verse 25, Wherefore putting away lying, Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Another action to stay in fellowship with God is that we speak truth. This book right here, the Holy Bible, this King James Bible, is absolute truth. We have no other truth. In fact, there is no other document known to humankind that is absolute, reliable truth than the Word of God. You see, the Word of God has to be absolute truth. Because if there is no document in mankind that is absolute truth, in other words, it's the reference that everything goes, it's the balance by which everything is measured. If we don't have something that's absolute truth, then there's nothing could ever be wrong because there's nothing to judge it by if you don't have truth. Now we're to speak truth. The Bible tells us to put away lying and to speak truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another. Speaking truth, replacing old habits with new holiness, then verse 26, be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. We need to stay spiritual. May our minds be on the spiritual things. There is such a thing as righteous anger. But where that anger turns into sin is when we let that anger control us. And we let that anger control our flesh with things like what we call flying off the handle. 
having a bad temper, saying things that we don't really mean but can't be taken back. When our mind are on the spiritual things of God, then the spiritual man that is within us has the rule of the day and is pleasing unto the Lord. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. That's a simple verse, isn't it? One simple little sentence. But boy, is it hard to live up to that verse. As a sanctified Christian, we are to discipline ourselves to not give Satan opportunities in our life. Do you know that when the devil comes through the door of our life, we're the one that opened it and let him in? We're the one that le- opened it and let him in. Our, our life, the door of our life, does not have a handle on the outside. The Lord Jesus taught us that in Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will open the door and let me in, I will come in unto him and sup with him and he with me. No one breaks through the door of your life. You open the door. And so Paul said to be a sanctified Christian, he said, don't give opportunities to the devil. Don't let him in. Don't open the door to him. And then in the last verses, verses 28 to 32, The Bible says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You know what all of that's telling us? It's telling us that we are to replace those things which dull our spiritual life and replace it with things that sharpen our spiritual life, personal renewal, salvation, and sanctification. Now back in our text in Psalm 51, let me speak secondly this morning on the fact of things that prevent renewal, the preventions of renewal. What will stop you from being renewed? What will stop you from being saved? What will stop you from being repaired? What will stop you from being restored and sharpened in the areas of your life that are dull? These are the preventions of renewal. The first one is apathy. Apathy just simply means, I just don't care. If you you don't care about being saved, then you won't be saved. Because salvation does not happen by accident. It is a a, 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 a definite, on-purpose act that you perform in placing your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You realize you're lost. You don't want to be lost. You don't want to go to hell. And so you put forth the effort. To put your faith, place your faith in Jesus Christ in order to be saved. So if a person uh, has apathy, I just don't care, well then they're just not going to be saved. That's going to prevent them from going to heaven. It's also going to prevent you from being restored and repaired. If you say, well I I don't care. I I, I don't care what so and so done to me. But if you didn't care, you wouldn't mention it. So many times, we, uh, the biggest deceiver in our life is ourself. We try to talk ourselves into something or uh, convince ourselves of something that's other than the truth. But if you don't care about being restored and repaired, well, then you won't. And you'll just live a defeated life. 
But then also, if you say, well, I just, I, I don't care about being sharpened. I, I don't care about getting back sharp again, getting back up on the front line of the battle for the Lord. I, 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 don't, I don't care nothing about being sharpened or I'm just happy where I'm at. Why well, then you'll just continue to live that life and your spiritual life will become duller and duller and duller. Not only does apathy prevent renewal, but complacency prevents renewal. Complacency is indifferent. It's a little different than apathy, which means I don't care. But complacency is indifference. It don't matter to me. It don't matter. But it also means not only indifference, but it means self-satisfaction. To be complacent is simply this. We just don't see the need in our life. Now, we surely are good at seeing the need in the lives of others, but we're just fine. People say things like, me and God, we're all right. And you're a million miles away. Indifference. Self-satisfaction. Why, uh, I don't need sharpening. I don't need restoring. Why, I'm already saved. Me and God, we're tight. Me and God, we're all right. A child of God that's living in the fear of the Lord doesn't say things like that. Because we fear God. If you study the life of the Apostle Paul, the only thing in his life that he feared was letting God down and losing his testimony. And so it should be for the child of God. Apathy and complacency will keep us from being renewed. There's too much indifference to God and His Word. It's like we've forgotten what God has to say and how God looks at sin and how God reviews sin and judges sin. We're just too indifferent to the will of God for us. People say a lot of things with their mouth, but their life doesn't back it up. And then there's an indifference towards God that just runs rampant through a human life until, and this is where David came to, until you have nowhere else to go. Then you start crying out to God. It was after David was found out. It was after Nathan had pointed David out as the guilty rich man who took the one little ewe lamb, Bathsheba, away from the one poor man, Uriah, and fed it to the traveler, which is the lust of the flesh. Then conspired to have Uriah killed, thought he was a, got away with it, thought it would never be brought up again, but God called him out. And the indifference that David may have had to his sin was no longer an indifference because now he's been called. And now he has no way out except through the Lord. Our 27th president, William Howard Taft, once said, too many people don't care what happens so long as it doesn't happen to them. I pray that you're not caught up into the trap of apathy and complacency when it comes to the destination of your eternal soul, whether it be heaven or hell. And whether you're living a vibrant Christian life or you live in a life of damage, and you're in need of repair? Or are you living a dull life? So let me give you the third and final. 
thing about renewal today. And I call this the procedures for renewal. How do we become renewed? First of all, we have to go to the source of renewal, and that is the Lord. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and restore within me or renew within me a right spirit. The pastor can't help you. The pastor can't clean your heart. The pastor can't renew your, a right spirit within you. Only the Lord can do that. You have to go to Him. And then let me say, secondly, that when you go to the Lord and, and when you get there, wait on Him. Don't rush Him. Don't be impatient. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And then let me say that when you go to the Lord with a confessing attitude, a repentant heart, your forgiveness will happen immediately. But don't expect a quick fix. To all of your situation. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 15 and 16. For all things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. It's not a magic process where you kneel down at an altar and say, now Lord, forgive me of my sins, and He will. He'll do that immediately. But don't get up off your knees thinking, okay, everything in my life is going to be sunshine and roses again. No. There's consequences. There's things you have to deal with. You have to be renewed day by day. It's a daily process. Now as I conclude the message, I'd like for you to just take a personal inventory for just the next minute or so. It took a traumatic event in David's life to open his eyes. Where are you spiritually today? Are you lost? Are you backslidden? Are you cold? Are you bitter? Are you burnt out? Are you afraid? Are you apathetic? Are you complacent? Are you indifferent? What's your plan? What are you going to do with what God has showed you today? You know, this internet services is a little different than our normal worship service. different in a couple of ways. One, there's nobody here. In the church house, I'm preaching to empty pews. And I say this very kindly and carefully, but many times people will come to church and they may not come for the right reason. They may not have come to worship the Lord. They may have come for other things. They may have been invited to come. And maybe they didn't want to, but out of respect for the one that invited them, they came. And, and they're really not interested in what's going on here. But they're here. But the internet church, this internet service, you, tu you tuned in on purpose. You didn't have to, but you did. And so I pray that you'll take what we've said today from the Word of God and let God do a work in your heart. What do I do, preacher? Well, you go to God. You go to Him first. You read verses 1 to 4, and I'm not going to take the time to read all of those verses, but 
You'll find that in those four verses, David went to God repenting. He went to God confessing. He went to God taking responsibility for his actions. And he went to God and told the Lord that he realized that it was the Lord whom he had offended. It was the Lord whom he had sinned against. And then be broken. Allow, allow yourself to be broken. In verse number 17 of Psalm 51, David said, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Let's bow our heads and let's have a simple prayer this morning. And right where you are there in your home, watching this video over the internet, pray the Spirit of God will touch your heart. And that even now, you can cry out as David and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for the opportunity to preach this morning. Now I pray you'd speak to hearts. And dear Lord, do a work of grace in each one. We ask in Jesus' name.